Hi, today I thought I'd show you how to make some cane toppers from pinch pots. So we'll make a tomato, see the hole for the cane, and we'll make a pear. There's so many types of pinch pot that you can make. You can add details, you can stamp it, you can put holes in it. Just have fun with it. So these are the tools that you're going to need. I use 200 grams of stoneware clay. It's slightly grogged, which is ideal for the garden. I'll need a sponge. You could use a makeup sponge or something with a fine texture. You need a bowl of water, some slip, which is just watered down clay, some paint brushes, a knife, something to roughen the clay so that you can join it easily, but you can also use a fork. I have a few more tools here that I always have to hand, but you probably won't need them. So to begin, I'll put everything that I need close to me. And my sponge. And here's my piece of clay. So to start your pinch pot, hold your piece of clay and you get your thumb in there first. We're going to be making a deep bowl shape so you don't want to press out the room too much. I put my thumb in and I go into circular motion and I keep turning the clay as I press in. I'm pressing down towards the bottom as well as on the sides. You need to try and keep your walls even. Don't make them too thin. Also have this piece of sponge here that I use occasionally, which I can press down into, but I find it's not as accurate as holding in the palm of my hand. So you should be able to feel the thicker parts and just press out those. Beware you don't make your room too thin. We're going to need a slightly thicker room. So I'm just making sure it's even all the way around. Take your time when making a pinch pot. A lot of people struggle to make pinch pots because they do it too quickly. It's about the making, not about the speed. So now we're closing up the mouth of our pot. So I'm moving my fingers together, pushing the clay together to close up the rim. We want a completely closed up hollow sphere which will then allow us to do all kinds of things to it before we add the hole for the cane. I'm still trying to keep my pot even, the walls even as we go around. So I'm just supporting it in my hand, I'm not putting any pressure on it. The pressure is all coming from my fingers. So 
so we're almost there. So it looks like it's closed, but I'm just going to carry on just a little bit, just pushing the clay into the center just to make sure that that hole is nice and solid and not too thin in places. So now we have a sphere, which is ideal time to just neaten it up a little bit. It's being a sphere full of air, so you can manipulate it quite easily. So I use a damp sponge. If you put in your water, try and squeeze out most of the water. Slightly damp, wipe it down. And then I like to use my fingers and my hands more than tools, really. Smooth that out as much as you can. So that's looking good. Okay, so we have a sphere. I think we'll make a pair from this one. So to get a pair, I need to dent it around the center. So you have a bulbous bit at the bottom and then slightly more shaped, tapered top to it. See, I'm using my hands. So my thumb's moving in all directions at different angles so that you don't get too many dents in your clay. You're smoothing it and shaping it at the same time. pear shape to you. I think that looks okay. Let's put a little dent in the top where your stem will go. I'll put that there for a second. So now we need to make our stem. I have a small piece of clay which I'm going to roll between my hands into a sausage. I'll also roll it on the table. We don't need that whole bit, so I'm just going to chop that off. It's a big enough piece for a stem. I'm just going to push down the top, tap the bottom. You need a flattish, roundish bit to attach it. Stems nice and round. You can add a little bit of texture to it. I'm just going to make a little hollow in the top. Can add a bit of texture around the stem. So now we need to roughen the edges for joining. So I'm going to roughen the bottom and I'm going to roughen the top my paintbrush I'm going to add some slip to the top and to the bottom of my stem and I'm going to attach it. Now it needs to be quite firmly attached. So I'm pushing down and wiggling from side to side. I can see there's some excess slip around the top. So I can use my sponge to remove that. You can also use your paintbrush to do the same thing. And that is our simple pair. So that one is still quite soft. I'm going to leave that to firm up a bit before I put the hole in the bottom. Here's one I made earlier. 
So I'll demonstrate how to make the hole. I do have a hole cutter, but for this I think I will use a knife to demonstrate. So I'm going to cut across in the bottom and then cut out the excess. Be sure to remove that excess. And there you have a hole, and then it's just a matter of neatening it up. You can make the hole as big as you need it. You know how big your canes are that you're going to use in the garden. If you've made your hole too big, just pinch the clay together a bit to make it slightly smaller again. I'm going to squash my sponge. Stick that in and just roll it around a bit to neaten up my hole. And there's my hole. Now we're going to make a tomato. So here's a sphere I made earlier. I just pressed down, flattened it a little bit, and made a dent in the center for the stem and the leaves. So I have some leaves that I made earlier. I'll demonstrate how to make them. So from my sausage, I've got a piece of clay. I'm going to make one end pointed, make the other end pointed, place it on my finger, and I'm going to use the other end of my paintbrush. I'm just going to draw it along and flatten the center, and turn it around and do the same thing again. And there's my leaf. I'm going to bend my leaf slightly. So it's a little bit more interesting. You can also twist it slightly, which would be quite fun. Then we're going to need a stem. Here's a bit more of our sausage. A bit nice and round. So tap down. End. And a bit for the bottom. Slightly rounded. Add some texture again if you like. Glaze, some glazes react really well to texture, which can be quite fun. I'm just going to make a little hollow in the top, just because I want to scratch the bottom. I need to scratch a section on my tomato. I'm going to add some slip to both ends. I think first we need to add the leaves. So let's put the stem aside for now. And we need to scratch the bottom of our leaves. Add some slip. I'm adding slip to both ends. I'm going to attach it in the center and on the end. doesn't matter if your leaves are different sizes. This can be as accurate as you like. It's your tomato. Okay, so now we have our five leaves on. I'm going to tap in the center, nice and firmly, but without squashing the leaves, to make sure that they're firmly attached. Tap the end of each leaf. Make sure that's firmly attached. And then we're going to add a little blob of slip in the center so that we can attach our stem. And some slip on the bottom of our stem. Place the stem on. I'm going to press down while wiggling side to side. Make sure that that feels secure. 
nicely securely attached. So I'm going to clean off my paintbrush and dry it off a bit and then wipe off the excess slip. I'm going to wipe it onto my leaves just to neaten up my leaves a little bit. And that is your tomato. Well, I hope you enjoyed making those. Happy potting.